just a quick intro about uh, myself. I am I am Arjun Nawag, and uh, I, I, I am basically a design verification engineer in, in the field of uh, uh, VLSI, front end uh, um, IC verification engineer. And uh, I, I hold a good hands on experience on system on chip, um, IP verification, and FPGA verification perspectives. Uh, I, I hold about 12 plus years of experience in the industry. I work for um, uh, clients like uh, Intel, Qualcomm, some of the semicon majors based out of Europe, US, um, and, and uh, talk about the domains. Fortunately, I've got opportunity to uh, work on full cycle tape outs for uh, um, domains like networking, um, defense, and in fact, 5G today, and in fact, uh, something on AI based chipset development also. So, uh, apart from that, apart from my mainstream job, I'm also uh, a researcher, I'm also a research scholar, industrial research scholar at uh, you know, one of the esteemed university in India. And I'm actually pursuing my doctoral work on uh, reusable verification methodologies for uh, complex system on chip verification. That's that's the area of my research. And I've been collaborating with uh, Open Power Foundation on those perspectives uh, for uh, you know running my verification environment, um, the verification algorithm on a system on chip. So I've been. Uh, uh, collaborating with Open Power on that front, um, I, I in fact also thought of picking Risk Five, but I altogether I, I have a different plans, and I've uh, finally decided to go with Open Power Core, which is A 2 O this point in time. And there is an academic team um, from uh, the university where I'm pursuing my uh, doctoral work. And uh, along with the academic team, I am actually collaborating to build a system on chip. First of all, um, around the around the A2O core, which is an open open source uh, you know, processor core from uh, IBM, which where all the IBM holds the, the ownership of it. And uh, though it is open source, I I, I found that uh, this is this is just a quick observation from mine. I, I see Risk Five can be more used as an accelerator, but uh, for the application processing or for the real time processing, understanding the fact that uh, uh, the A2O cores um, are quite sophisticated and can cater the needs of uh, uh, data compute intensive um, workloads or the complex workloads today with the advent of AI, ML, um, and uh, IoT kind of uh, workloads. I, I found I, I found um, uh, you know a two o core uh, the open power cores can be the in order core which is a two i or the outer protocol a two o or the micro watt which is predominantly being used for the academic purposes as on today uh, to be better options with the with the kind of options uh, in terms of the architectural suitability and other perspectives. So uh, Anand is actually the name of that fabulous system on chip that uh, is being developed uh, at Jawaharlal Nehru Technological University, Anandapur, the university at which I'm actually pursuing the doctoral work. And this Anand SOC is actually built around uh, the A2O core, and there are a few peripherals which are being developed from the scratch. So the whole purpose of the system on chip is actually to cater the needs of some academic R&D purposes. However, um, uh, considering uh, the peripherals that you see on the screen, uh, uh, it, it, it will also cater the needs of some IoT uh, workloads as well, with the presence of SPI, I2C kind of peripherals and uh, high-speed uh, uh, memory controllers like DDR3, right? And we also have a DMA controller, a PCI, Ethernet, and one SGDMA scatter gather DMA. So the core, um, the SOC is actually built around this A2O core. And uh, we have uh, different teams working um, for this SOC, where we, we actually have a um, design team who is working on uh, the development of the peripherals from the scratch. So whatever whatever uh, um, peripherals that you have noticed on the SOC architecture are being developed in very long from the scratch, um, looking at the specs from the open source communities. And uh, 
they are integrated on an AXI bus. In fact, uh, that is also developed from the scratch, looking at the specs in Verilog. And uh, they are integrated, they are stitched together to form an SOC along with the A2O core. So we are getting good support from the uh, Open Power team. Let it be on the integration front or let it be on the ISO or could be uh, on the SDK front, uh, the, the, the software development kit perspectives. Um, uh, we, we are actually trying to develop this SOC and at this point in time, the, the plan is actually to develop a fabulous SOC, all right? And moving further, we wanted to actually enhance uh, the SOC architecture by adding a few, few more peripherals after performing some testing on the simulation environment itself. And once the improvisation perspectives are brought in, we also wanted to go for the next version of the SOC, which will be fabulous. However, that will be ported on uh, an FPGA uh, to understand uh, what kind of uh, hardware performance metrics it has got uh, in terms of the latency, in terms of the throughput and things like that. So, so that's the overall roadmap that we have at this point in time. We are looking at the timelines of about 18 months. It's, it's, already, it's already been a while since we have started this activity. And uh, uh, so as, as I told you, there are a few teams which are spread across and working for the development, design and development of this uh, system on chip that is built around the A2O course. One is the design team and the integration team working together. And um, uh, we have verification team who are working on uh, developing the SOC level verification environment, which encapsulates this system on chip design and test. And we'll be generating uh, the protocol compliant traffic by using some verification IPs, uh, right? So the, they are all compliant to UVM, universal verification methodology and system very long. And uh, an environment will be built around along with the integration of those VIPs uh, uh, connecting to this uh, design IPs, which you see uh, as part of the SOC architecture. Right? Um, so as I explained, there are a few peripherals like NAND, NOR, and uh, DDR, which constitute the memory controllers. And when it com comes to the high-speed serial data interface, we have uh, a Gen 3 PCIe and one Ethernet, which is configured in GMII. Um, and we have uh, SPI and I2C, which are configured in master alone. Um, so these are the few peripherals that uh, we have got. Apart from this, we, we actually have uh, um, the driver development team, right? So, so, so the design and verification is actually handled by um, uh, the, the, uh, the graduate guys for, from electron, School of Electronics. And we also have a team working uh, uh, from uh, uh, the School of Computing in the same college, in the same institute. Uh, for the driver development for all the peripherals that I spoke about. Um, the names that you see on, on the screen uh, are, are the candidates who are working or the students who are working for this uh, um, peripheral uh, driver development. And the, the corresponding names for the driver development can be seen here. Um, at the same time, I wanted to showcase a uh, few of the you know, around this open source course. It's not just about uh, the availability of the course, but uh, we are also looking at the availability of a few peripherals, um, which are silicon proven, uh, which, which is actually a major challenge. Th though we are developing uh, our own course from the scratch, the challenge would be to develop the verification IPs, which actually comes with uh, a silicon proven core that uh, will be encapsulated within that uh, verification IP, uh, which will again act as a golden reference model, right? So uh, for that purpose, we are actually depending on a couple of this. One is a Librasoc, and uh, the other one is actually Litex open source uh, platform, uh, where uh, fortunately we have got um, enough as far as the peripherals is concerned. And the silicon provenness is pretty much for this course. If you see the screen, I'm actually sharing the GitHub link of the Litex platform and where some of the peripherals, if you see, there are a few peripherals that are silicon proven and uh, uh, tested, thoroughly tested, that are available for us, which we are actually using for building our uh, course as well as our verification IPs that encapsulates this course, actually. All right. 
So we would actually like to use this course moving further. If you see the roadmap that I projected before time, we, we actually have a typical roadmap for about next 18 months or two years or so, where we wanted to add more peripherals to the system on chip, which will improvise uh, uh, as part of the improvisation uh, factor for this uh, Anant SOC, right? So we also wanted to utilize the platforms um, in, in uh, picking the course. Uh, uh, as well as uh, uh, the Litex platform. But about this platform. So uh, uh, the objective here is actually build an open source concept to silicon ecosystem. So I'm just trying to showcase, I'm still talking about the front end perspectives. Um, just to quickly talk about the back end part, we are uh, um, uh, eFabless, I will be talking about it moving further, but uh, the perspective here is more on the front end uh, design verification uh, part. So uh, we have a typical HDL flow that supports uh, multiple tools that are available as open source, right? So I'm actually trying to browse across. If you see, there is a bug tracker which is available and there are a few ma configuration management tools, um, you know, that are available. Uh, where uh, some authentication and uh, authorization process is also set for that. And uh, uh, there, there are uh, uh, a few of the editors which are available as an open source. Apart from that, most importantly, when it comes to development, the EDA tools um, has been uh, a challenge for anyone, right? So uh, we also have got tools like Yosis, uh, right? Symbiosis and NMI Gen, and we also have uh, um, this is all on the design front. Coming to the verification part, uh, we also have access to very later, and we are also exploring uh, on uh, um, Coco TB kind of an environment, which is in fact gaining traction along with system very log and object oriented based test benches that are built um, these days for silicon provenness. Uh, we are also working on developing a Python based uh, transaction level. A stimulus generation by uh, by using this Coco TB framework. So uh, we have all these simulators and environments available as part of this Libresoft, which is greatly helping us to build this open source ecosystem for the concept of silicon, especially on the front end part, right? So I think this actually covers pretty much on how this open source silicon to tape out perspective on the front end using the Open power course is actually done. I'm actually showcasing one of the one such use case that we are trying to do at one of the academia. Um, coming to the back end, right? So we actually are collaborating with Ganesh and Open Power on this front, and it could support on on the on 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 both the front end as well as the back end perspectives. So in the interest of time, I'll quickly talk about the support that we are getting from eFabless and what is actually available there. So whatever um, I spoke out is all on the front end perspectives. Coming to the back end, so this is the flow. Let's say we have a design. So you can see there is a complete open loan flow that is defined in eFabless, right? With your own credentials, you can create your project. And the complete path from our creation of, uh, from loading a RTL to generation of a GDS2 phase uh, is, is all available. In, in, in fact, there are a few open source cores, some open source tools that are available in eFabless, which uh, we wanted to exercise at a later point of for the front end perspectives also. But at this point in time, our plan is actually to get support uh, from eFabless on the back end perspective. Uh, the LEC, the logical equivalent checking, the detailed routing, the STA, physical verification, and the GS2, the GDS2 generation. So quickly, this is the kind of uh, um, open um, open source uh, concept to silicon kind of an ecosystem that we are trying to build in collaboration with the Open Power Course and uh, the open that are available. So my uh, with all these inputs, why quick suggestion to all the VLSA enthusiasts that can be from academia or for people who wanted to start their, they have they have a concept in mind where they wanted to materialize it. So the challenge today is the availability of the resources, infrastructure and things like that. But uh, 
i think this is this is the uh, this is this kind of uh, inputs will be required uh, actually for uh, for all those enthusiasts to start and to actually come up with all the simulation environments design and actually you can act, you can create your own gds2 with, with minimal support utilizing this open source platforms right so we also are collaborating with a few other academy um, both uh, as part of my interest a passion that i've got on the vlsa space and also as part of my research statement um, for my doctoral work so um, this is all i have uh, at this point in time maybe i will be able to share a few more updates on the perspectives that i spoke till now um, if i get a chance in the future however uh, i'm pretty much done for the day thank you and uh, i'm open for questions brilliant thank you arjun um, do we have any other questions for Arjun? Um, either unmute yourself or post it in the chat. Uh, whilst we wait, uh, I have one question. Uh, so how old is the, uh, is the LibreSoc uh, project, do you know? Uh, I'm 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 just uh, waiting to see if anybody has got any questions. Even Mike, me, Ganesh, Richard, anybody has got any questions? I'm... Am I am I audible? Hello. Yeah, we I, we can hear you. I asked you. Um, uh, how old is the LibreSoc project? Do you know? I have a comment from Mike B, which is uh, he's new to the project, so just learning more. I, I don't know if you can hear me, but um, yeah, so I followed along a little while ago, but I hadn't really understood how it encompassed all of the different bits and pieces. So um, it came through on the uh, open source uh, user group. So I thought I'd follow on long tonight. So that's why I'm not really in a good position to ask, answer or ask sensible questions yet. It does look very interesting, and I'll follow up on some of the slides and the information. And I see there's still funding needed so uh, to get things going. Jeremy, Stephen, are you there? Uh, Mike? Can yes. You hear? Yeah, can you hear us? Did you hear Mike's comments just now? Hello. Hey, Arjun. Yeah, I can hear you now. Yes, yes. Did you hear Mike's comment just a moment ago? No, I couldn't. Can you can you please repeat it? I, I think there is some problem. I couldn't hear it. Mike, can you please come again? Yes, yeah, so I was saying I'm new to the project, but I'm following up on the various links that you've posted. But I yes. do see that there's still more funding needed to the tune Correct. of about 30, 40, uh, 25, 30% um Got to it. complete the project what will happen if you don't complete it in those 30 uh, 16 days left right right you're absolutely right mike so um, we are actually trying to explore ways to speed up this pro uh, process but at this point in time we have got we, we don't have any implication on the finances because everything is actually open source uh, right so um, i don't see a major implication there it's all about uh, having a proper schedule and utilizing the resources around us. So that's that's how we are trying to build the environment at this point in time. Um, and my question, Arjun, was uh, how old is the actual LibreSoc project? Yes, yes. Uh, so 
Liberisa project is actually old. There are few multiple versions. I will be sharing the link with you. Um, the Liberisa, uh, in fact, there are some indicators that are developed. All right. Um, I believe uh, um, it's 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 pretty old. In fact, I don't have the exact info on how old it is. Ganeshan, you have any idea how when did this Liberisa project start and things like that? Because we we started using this course um, maybe maybe like uh, from from December and something like 2021, right? For for our for our system on chip development. But uh, as I see, there are multiple versions which are already silicon proven and tested in Liberisoc. Um, so I, I and I see that uh, there are a few of the cores which are silicon proven. Brilliant. Um... So I, I might be missing all the information. So if this is a dumb question, just ignore it. But normally with mm -hmm. um, the donation campaigns, there's some idea of where the contributions are, are going to go to, either possibly with a T-shirt or with particular elements of the project. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm looking at the powerpcnotebook.org site and the campaign, and mm -hmm. I've I don't see that information. Thank you. Uh, Mike, that's for the next speaker. Um, yes. Okay, that's the next. <laughs> okay <laughs> fair enough. <laughs> I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, thank you for your talk, Arjun. Um, I guess.